Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to talk about this thing called what? Thank you. So what if, what if we viewed sexual health in context? A lot of people let you know that I call myself a contextologist. That means I can put things in context appropriately and often. But just think about it. Become that yourselves. Become a contextologist with me. Just put this in perspective. What if we viewed sexual health in context? When I think about what if, it takes me back to my childhood. I used to read comic books, right? Raise your hand if you ever felt yourself reading a comic book. Some of you still might read comic books, right? <laughs> but one of my favorite series of comics through Marvel Comics was the What If series. As you see behind me, you'll see the one that says, what if Spider-Man was a part of the Fantastic Four? And the question is raised, would it be a Fantastic Five? <laughs> but these comics opened a realm of impossibilities and made them possible to change our thinking in a different mindset, to shift the way we think. You know, we can create our own. What if Superman and Batman were like God brothers or something, you know? Something interesting. But the other, the other what if for me comes in the form of music. One of my favorite groups is The Roots. And the first song I ever heard by The Roots was called Proceed. And so it went a little something like, Yo, what if? What if we could just, just blink ourselves away? What if? What if we could just blink ourselves away? In the world we live in, this world that's so crazy that you see so much pain, strife, and bullying, so much violence, so much angst, what if we could just mm, blink yourselves away? Close your eyes for two seconds. Just blink. Mm. What if we could change outcomes? What if we could look at things differently? Well, ah, what if we could just blink ourselves away? So when we think about these realms of impossibilities or possibilities, we think about the movie The Color Purple. Has anybody ever seen that movie? Yeah, okay. Just wanted to make sure. So this movie is very powerful. It's very humorous, very sad. Because it looks a lot at isms. Racism, classism, sexism, looks at pedophilia, looks at incest, looks at rape, looks at violence. It looks at identity, whether you know it or not. And we walk through the life of Miss Seely and some of the danger, toils and snares that she had to overcome. And we see a little bit of ourselves or our family or someone we know in some of these same violent circumstances. But then we contrast that with Prince, the prophetic Prince, who is a sexual health God. When we look at expression, sexual expression and sexual identity, I like to say that Prince was the first honey badger because he just didn't give a damn. <laughs> And it's so funny how we forget about the influences of Prince in sexual identification because we look at people like Russell Westbrook or Dwayne Wade and, you know, like their fashion sense. All that started with Prince, whether we want to admit to it or not. But Prince gives us something else. He gives us hope that we can be who we are and not what everybody wants us to be. So when we look at sexual health equity, that's what we're looking at. We're looking at this, this vision that we can blink and, and see where we want to be in a life that is connected to our identity, but is free of coercion, free of bullying, free of just, you know, the things that make us have to choose where we go to the facilities, right?
Makes, we shouldn't have to just think about that. We should just go, right? Wherever you feel comfortable, you should go. Well, sexual health equity is a, a distant cousin to reproductive justice. And later on, we can explore. <laughs> but when we think about this country, we think about the history of this country. We think about people of color. We think of black people. We think of Africans that were in America that are still in America and how we've been treated. And it hasn't been fair, has it? But people like to just wash over that history. Oh, get over it. So this is what's good about the color purple. We could see the ill effects of this history. We can look at the issues around the legality of consent and know that slavery brought on a lot of issues. Sex was used as a weapon. It's still used as a weapon. But the problem was that we weren't considered people. We were considered property three-fifths of a person, right? So when we start talking about issues of equality or equity, then we have to understand that we were never in the conversation to start with because we are viewed as property and still viewed as property. There are no rights to property, right? So what we have to do is look at that history. And so be so mindful to not repeat it as we have been. So when we think about the legality of consent. We think about court cases, right? We think about Dred Scott case that told white men that they don't have to be concerned about the opinion of black men. We think about the, uh, the judge in Canada who told a sexual assault victim that she should have closed her legs. We think about privilege. We think about white male privilege specifically to think about how so many of these White males have gotten off for heinous acts and crimes due to their judges saying, we, want, we don't want to do harm to their futures. But what about the people they harmed? So we think back again to these connections. We think about identity. We think about how we are viewed what were some of the things that Seeley was told? You're black, you're ugly, you'll never amount to anything. You'll never be Suge, Suge got spunk, Suge got talent. It's already pitting us against each other. But one of the things I like to flesh out is to, to show us that even with those negative stereotypes, even through those acts of violence, the prophetic prince always gives us something so what did Prince tell us? He said, you don't have to be what? I, I, I didn't hear you. He said, he don't have to be what? No, mm -mm -mm. you got to start at the beginning. You don't have to be beautiful to turn me on. It's so funny how we think about what other people think about us and turn that into the projections of ourselves. So... One of the things that I, I, I tend to fall back on is looking at the resiliency of us as a people, but especially women. And this poem comes to mind. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. Unconquerable soul. We think about black women and all that they had to endure, and their souls are unconquerable. There's power right there. It's beautiful. But do not misinterpret strength by be able, being able to take so many things. But be looking at this in matter of how you survive and move forward. That is the true strength. A lot of young men are told not to cry, but that is not true strength. It actually leads to more issues. So when we think about trauma, historic trauma, and we think about how that all evolves. We think about the issues of, you know, women in this country, especially women of color, dealing with that trauma. We, we, we fall on the, the, the research of epigenetics, and epigenetics tells us that Holocaust survivors have altered stress hormones, right, due to the trauma that they, said, that they face, the, the buildup of cortisol in the body. When that cortisol is built up in the body and can't be replaced or, or taken back, 
then it, it gets sucked in. And then what happens is that we are predisposing our offspring, the future generations, to health issues. You can look at the uh, you can look at the, the, the many people that are doing research, uh, Dr. Cheryl Woods Giscombe, who's looking at the superwoman schema. We can look at so many others. We can look at Dr. Joy DeGruy, who's looking at the post-traumatic slavery syndrome. But make sure that you keep these people in mind when we're looking at the healing aspects of what we should be doing. So I'll leave you with this. A battle cry for us all. All my life, I've had to fight. All my life, you've probably had to fight. All my life, we've had to fight. And the battle continues.